Hi guys, and welcome back to Between Us Girlies. I'm Bran. I'm Lindsay. I'm Bailey. I'm Casey. And we are so sorry for the delay that this episode is coming out on Thursday. I would love to place the blame elsewhere, but it is 100% my fault. I was invited to a really exciting event, and without fully reading the email, I decided I was going to rearrange everyone's life. I asked everybody to cancel, switch things up. Um, because we normally film on Mondays, which has now just become the most chaotic day of my life for no reason. Before this podcast, I did nothing on Mondays and now everyone's asking me to do something on Mondays. Um, so I was prepared to fully go to New York City on Monday when I reread an email that actually I had the date wrong and that it was for next week. But here we are. How was everyone's weekend? Casey, I haven't seen you in a minute. How was your weekend? I had a great weekend. I went out Friday night. Grimona. Um, I was so excited to go out this like all last week. I was like, I can't wait to go out. I'm in such a good headspace. I feel like I'm like out of my funk. And my boyfriend and I were like celebrating two years since we met, which is like not a real anniversary to celebrate. That but is I'm just most like, certainly real. Yeah, yeah, I just like whatever. I like celebrating it. So whatever. We went to this really nice restaurant, had like an amazing dinner. We like one of those slow dinners where we had like three glasses of wine each and then espresso martinis like over the course of a while. So like by the end of the dinner, I was pretty drunk. We closed the place out. There was no one no. left. The chef literally came out to like say bye to us. He was like, sorry, guys. Like, you know, we're closing up. So we had to like chug our drinks. Oh, you got kicked out. I literally kicked out. We were like, oh, I don't know what to do. So we went to another bar and then that's um, where it all went downhill. We just, we did two tequila shots. Oh, we got a tequila tonic. And it was just him and I, but we were just like having fun and blacking out. And then I woke up Saturday morning on top of the covers with my lights on. Um, and my boyfriend did too. Well, first I woke up like with the lights on, but I was like freaking out. I was like, oh my God, Jake's going to be so mad at me because I blacked out. Like, I'm, I don't remember how we got home. I don't remember anything about the night. Um, and I was up for like two hours before him, just like freaking out. You know how you yeah. spiral when you wake up from a blackout? Mm -hmm. um, and then he woke up and I was like, oh, like what time did we get home last night? Like trying to play it cool. And he was like, I don't know. I don't remember getting home. And I was like, Oh, thank God. So then I couldn't go out this weekend because I was like sick all day Saturday. I was so hungover oh, from like an unintentional blackout. So Darn. I know I missed the night out, which I'm so mad. Yeah. How was it? You didn't was. miss much. Okay. Well, well in my opinion. It was a, I'm trying to think. I have no Crazy. idea how the night went from those three answers. Like I have no <laughs> gauge of if it was a good weekend. Why don't, okay. Me and Lindsay left before Bailey did. So why don't you fill us in on maybe what we missed right. after we left? Did well, it get crazy? <laughs> didn't. Um, I actually controlled myself. Bottle service, like I said, the first episode or whenever we talked about bottle service, um, I kept it cool, calm and collected. I didn't drink that much. I even did my whole like club soda with the lime trick. Like I think like you might have still been there because I walked right. around with like a tall boy. Um, <laughs> Cause I'm like, she made it so obvious I'm not drinking. I'm like, God damn. But <laughs> You were like, all right, it's time for me to Irish exit. And you did it so smooth, like yep. nice. You did it too, Lindsay. I mean, you I was out. You were what like, time I'm leaving. I left at like 12.15. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. Was it that? Oh, fine. It was kind of early, yeah. <laughs> I guess I stayed for about like, I left probably like 1.15 because I picked someone up on my way home around 1.25. Oh, but, um, But so I was still there. Interesting let's, let's how that happens. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get back to the story at hand. Um, so I, too, because I was like looking around. I was like on my phone sitting at the table. I was like, I could do this at home. So <laughs> I was like, what am I doing here? Texas, are you up? Who you like? Who's up? <laughs> Got a roster going. Um, and then I tried to Iris exit. But it was one of those things where I was one of the last people there. And it was like, oh, you're leaving? What are you doing leaving? I was like, shit. So as soon as I got up from the table, every single person in that bar stopped me on the way out. No. Like, it was when I was like, I couldn't. Like, my Uber, I was still downstairs. My Uber was already there. Like, that's how I was like, you know I don't mess around with the Ubers there. Like, I usually just get going. Like, don't stop. Um, I heard it to our one friend, Gabby, though. And she was like, Bailey, you won't believe this. I just fell down the stairs. <laughs> oh, my God. And that was the second person who told me randomly that night they fell down the stairs at the bar. And I just thought, she was like, say that on your podcast. And I was like, all right. So I've actually never fallen down the stairs at Barstool. Never have I. For those at home, we went to Barstool. Yes. Again, take a drink every time we go to Barstool. <laughs> you'll be dead by 26. <laughs> Yeah, no, neither have I. Because I remember the shoes I was wearing, they were like a little bit like pointy heel. And I was like, if I, t and the, I had long jeans on. I was like, something gets caught, pow, 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 pow. I'm like, I'm not, I can't fall down these steps. It's crazy I had that thought and like two people fell. Um, but yeah, no, just kind of not I'm just picturing out. you falling down the steps of Barstool. <laughs> 
<laughs> I don't know what I would do. I probably wouldn't go back for a while, to be honest. I would crack. Yeah, it's like how many Who's steps do you out? fall? Like, do you, what's more embarrassing is like falling down the top row and then like on that like kind of getting up on that little landing or making it all the way down there and then falling down on the bottom. At the bottom the because bottom. there's a line of people waiting to oh, get yeah. into the yeah. downstairs part of Barstool and they're just going to see you. But wait, who'd you pick up on the way home? I don't, don't think I forgot about that. I don't think I could disclose that information on camera. All right. We'll keep keep. He's we'll a local keep. Philly celebrity. Lindsay, how was your Saturday? <laughs> um, My Saturday was fun. Wait, I... can we redact that real quick? That, that could give a lot of people. <laughs> I said local Philly celebrity. It was not Philly really celebrity. Go back to what you were saying, Lindsay. I understand. I'm sorry. I just had to get that out. We believe you. <sighs> um, my Saturday was fine. I spent most of it with you, Bram, and Bale. Yeah. We did go to the Cheesecake Factory to eat. Casey, you oh, missed yes. out on the bread. I was so jealous. And Bailey did get the crab um, wontons, and they were chef's kiss. Wow. But uh, in terms of bar stool, I actually have an immunity necklace about this. Um, and we don't have to get into that now. If the no, was actually, cute. I was going to ask if we could start with immunity necklaces <laughs> because mine are at the top of mind, and I cannot run out of time on this episode. These need to be disclosed. Oh, I'm so Here's excited. Here's the thing. I had a friend come and play this weekend and I was very excited to see her. I don't see her often. So when I do, it's always a party. And she was with her other friend who I also don't see often. So it was very fun. My entire attention and focus was, I'm getting mad. My entire attention and focus was on my friend as it should have been. And it's crazy that when I got to the bar, Every single person who I knew, any person with a pulse, anyone who knew of me, decided to either A, get in my face, B, ask me for something, or C, just irritate me beyond belief. So my immunity necklace is this. If you show up somewhere where your friend has a bottle, and this is controversial, and I'm sorry for the listeners because it might be about you. If you show up to a table of someone else's, and you are a plus one, two, three, four, five of a friend who was invited to that table, you are not a part of that table. You are not, you should not be drinking. You should not be touching anything. You should not be talking to anybody. You should not have a spot in the booth unless you ask or it is something that you were invited to do by multiple people. The entitlement and the bizarre behavior from the people that I was surrounded by actually forced me to go home. So. If you're not invited, if you're not on the list, if somebody didn't directly invite you, don't act like you're on the the, the VIP list. You aren't. You are not invited. That's I, I will leave it at that. But that it, it did bother me. <laughs> I 100% agree, though. And I think I feel like that was such a juvenile thing to do. Like when you first started going out to mm-hmm. bars and you were 21, 22, and you're like, ooh, like, like who can I scam now? Like, don't do that as an outsider. And now that I think about it, your closing line when you were leaving, I recall what it was. I don't want to say it now. But you were pissed off and it's all making sense now. Everyone was irritating. Here's the thing. If you're going to do that, we are all for finessing. We are all for getting into a table and getting your free drink. But you need to be smart Mm -hmm. about it. Mm -hmm. If you're in a group of six people, I've always said this, you need the fearless finesser. The one who's going to take one for the team and say, let's not all go in there because then it's obvious. I'll take one for the team. I'll go, I'll get a drink, maybe two, and I'll slip it back to y'all. And I'll try to do that throughout the night. I've been doing that since I was 22 and I never had an issue. So I would never, where there's already only a small booth of like 10 to 15 people, bring myself and six others and then sit on the booth. That was really my problem. They were just in the way and we were all trying to dance and they were just sitting there and I'm just like, no, if you're going to sit down, go somewhere else. We are in the downstairs club part of Barstool. If you're not shaking ass, get the fuck out. Like, like you're what just are taking you up doing? Space. I had a friend here and you know what I did? I texted the person who was paying for part of the table and I said, do you mind if I bring not only to the bar, but to the pregame? Do you mind if I bring my friend and her friend so that he knew? And you know what he said? Absolutely, Lindsay. So that's what I did. But when I saw six others who were not invited, I looked at these girls like, wow. You guys have sacks because this is just, I wanted to push somebody else go. I'm, was it I'm, all, wait, was it all girls? Oh, it was the, it was the girls. That's the thing. Like if you want to go do that, do it to a group of guys you don't know. Mm-hmm. Like don't do it to a group that you might have some sort of connection to. Like if you're going to go scam a table, do it with a group of lonely men in the corner who need hot girls at their table. Don't yeah, do exactly. it to like your friend's table. And especially yeah. it was a male's birthday and his girlfriend was there and there's mm. other girls at the table. I think that's just, yeah, you're it wasn't about like to- these guys that we were with like wanted girls at the table. It right. was just no. like everyone was like a friend. It, that was a good way to describe it. Like 
if someone was a plus one and was invited, they were then bringing plus three with them. And it was just, it was getting messy. And I did have friends who were outside of the table. Like I had a college friend come to Barstool. I had some friends like mutuals come to Barstool. Mm -hmm. None of them were in the table. Yeah. It's like, be respectful. Yeah. Well, I have two immunity necklaces that go hand in hand with this, the events of this evening, because I also left for different reasons. I was having a ball. My DJ courtesy was there. I said to <laughs> Bailey right away, I said, he's going to play EDM. And I like a mix of EDM and hip hop. And he was doing just that, mm-hmm. like was throwing in some Waka Flocka, but also some Fisher, like a great mix. I was fist pumping like no other. I felt like I was on the Jersey Shore. My arm was about to unhinge. <laughs> like I was going after it. But then I look around and I noticed that a lot of people were not matching my energy, which is fine. I was on one. But not in that way. They were actually bringing misery. And here's my first immunity necklace. If you are in a bad mood and you do not want to go out, stay home. Stay home. And if you, maybe you're not, maybe maybe you're like someone like Lindsay where you're in a good headspace and then the events put you in a bad mood. Follow in Lindsay's suit. Now, number two. If you see me at a bar and I'm dancing, and I'm a little sweaty. <laughs> Why are you touching me? Why are you approaching me <laughs> with your face so close to me? I did Irish exit. And of course, as Bailey mentioned, it's a little bit of a maze trying to get out of yes. bar stool when you're downstairs. You got to go up. And I was so mad because I asked the bouncer at the front. I said, can I go through this section where there was nobody? It was a clear line to the finish. He was like, nope, you have to go that way through oh. the crowd. <sighs> I already see at the top of the stairs several people that I know and they're going to say something to me. And my Uber was also outside. And I was like, I don't want to do this. This girl grabs me, puts her arm around me where I'm sweating the most. My hair is dripping to the back of my neck. I wouldn't even want to touch me. Like I was full blown. Like I'm going home and showering. I was dancing way too much. It was a thousand degrees in that furnace of a bar stool bar. I need to get out of here. And I literally grabbed her hand as she was going to do it. And I said, hi, please don't do that. I'm so sweaty. She proceeds to do it anyway, <gasps> just to say, you know, my cousin, you, you know, my cousin, you, you're friends with her. Get the fuck off. me. I just spit and I'm <laughs> sorry. Get the actual fuck off me. You know what? Now I know your cousin. I'm going to tell your cousin that I don't <laughs> fuck with her cousin because you're <laughs> annoying. Why are you touching me? Why are you getting close to my face? You see sweat perfusing off me. I could get so mad. Like, oh don't, if I saw somebody at the bar sweating, I would be like, hey, girl, five, six feet apart, full COVID. What's up, girl? Yep. Social distancing. I don't need to hug you like that. You don't want to be touched when you're hot. Like, it's so, I like, agree. okay, I digress. <laughs> All righty. Um, <laughs> like, real quick off of that. Remember I was telling you guys about that one guy who always hugs me at the gym and I'm post working out? Like, like what? Don't, why? If There's a sweaty. time and a place for physical interaction. Mm-hmm. Know your role. Know your role. But on a more lighter note. <laughs> Before the events of that <laughs> evening, we did go to the Cheesecake Factory. Bring it back home, John B. And I thought a fun pyramid, since, you know, we're sometimes a little negative, <laughs> would be to rank your favorite chain restaurant bread. Um, and these are all good ones. So even at the bottom, like it's one that like you still like, but like it's not your favorite. So maybe we start at the top. If, if that's okay with everybody, because I have a number one in mind. Ooh. Ooh. I don't know. They're all so good. I think there's a clear winner. Who? Speak on it. Olive Garden. Those mm-hmm. breadsticks for me are number one on the bread pyramid. They are, you can get a dipping sauce, the Alfredo. Oh my goodness. You can, you can go to Olive Garden and get the soup, salad, and breadsticks. Like they're so smart to weave an item that they give to every table into a brand like promotion. Like let's give Olive Garden some respect for that. Like good for you. Get your bag. It's, it's absolutely my favorite. All the Italians listening to this. (laughs) And also, you know, like the bread at Olive Garden is so good that it actually makes it high stakes because if they give you a bad batch where it's like a little too overcooked, you don't have a good time. Like if your meal really centers around the quality of the bread, you know it's that good. Okay, but hear me out. Okay. Sometimes at Olive Garden, the best part of the, and I will give it to you, Olive Garden's at the, like it is one of the top, of my, like at my pyramid. Mm-hmm. But if you're gonna bang down some bread, you need to be able to do it dry. 
Like, think about what separates the bread from the rest. Like, Olive Garden's good. You dip it in that chicken and gnocchi soup. You dip it in a salad dressing, the Alfredo that comes with. Like, it is. But alone, it's just a garlicky piece of bread. Mm -hmm. Which is still good. It is. (laughs) It's drenched in oil and salt. Ooh, I want some. But I think that Queen Texas Roadhouse Thank has you. the best um, yes. rolls. Mm. And with paired with, first off, oh my God. First <laughs> off, they're always warm. Yes. Like every single time, like scorching. They come right out the oven. They bring you countless amounts of baskets. And then the cinna butter that goes, See, but or now, honey butter, not cinna. Sorry. This is, oh, honey? No, it might. It's cinnamon. I think so. It's cinnamon, cinnamon honey? butter. Yeah, it's cinnamon butter. <laughs> but I think with that, it's the same thing with Olive Garden. Without the butter... The You're, bread is no, the bread, the bread's still great. Whoever is back one? there kneading <laughs> that dough and letting that yeast rise, let's clap it up. For I them. do like that they mean business there. Like the second they sit you down, when you're at yeah. the hostess stand, they grab the bread basket. Like they're not, you're not waiting around for bread there. And I no. really, I respect that. I hustle. think the service there, the service prices, the menu, everything about Texas Roadhouse slap. No, like Texas, I have a pat, like you can get. Be- like two meals for thirteen dollars. I'm like, mom, it's on me today. Like that is. Such- I've only been there once. Oh, you're going twice. <laughs> I think we should go after this filming. Oh, yes. What about you, gluten free queen? What's your number one? I don't. I mean, that's the thing. I'm gluten free, so like mm. I. We know you eat it anyway. What makes you well, want to get like sick? A, there's a a line, so it's like there's some to me like all bread is good because I don't ever get to have it. So like sometimes I'm eating like shitty ass stale bread, and part of me is like, eh, well, at least it's bread. Like it's still kind of good. But if I had to pick, it would be Cheesecake Factory. I think their brown bread goes absolutely crazy. And I like, that's the only one I want to eat. Like if I had to pick anywhere, I'm picking Cheesecake Factory. But I'm, I'm limited because like, I try not to eat it. I don't know. Yeah. It's, I'm not as well versed. It's good. I, mean, I think I Cheesecake have... Factory is like solid three or four. Yeah. I, I think, think there's a Out few... of 10 or on the list? No, no, no. Like oh. on the pyramid. I was like, damn, that's no, no, pretty no, low. No, no, oh, Sorry. Let me, <laughs> let me clarify. On the pyramid, there's six slots. I think it's like either the last one in the mid row or the first one in the bottom row. Mm-hmm. It's still great, mm-hmm. but I think Texas and Olive Garden. I will say I just had Cheesecake Factory for the first time the other day, which like is wild to the listeners and you guys. Um, I wasn't too crazy about it. I mean, I ate about three pieces of it. Because I was hungry, but I was expecting a little bit more, I think. It needs butter. Yeah, it needs needs butter. butter. Sometimes it's like a little too crunchy, though. Not the brown bread, the white bread. Sometimes I'm like, ow, this hurt my gum. Like, (laughs) cracks off in your mouth. As much as I love Cheesecake Factory, the consistency is lacking there. Like, there are times where I go and it's the greatest experience I've ever had. And I'm like, wow, I should come here every day. And then there's times where I'm like, "Mm, don't need to come back for six months. I get it. Where would you guys rank Popeye's Biscuits? (laughs) <laughs> uh, I've never had them. It's going at the bottom. Clearly. It is going to go at the bottom. They're, I mean, a biscuit's just dry. Yeah. And like, yes, it's good yeah. with the chicken, but like once you start, it's a biscuit. I feel like that's but have you guys day. seen that guy on TikTok that eats it? Yeah. One it goes, bite. <laughs> Literally, how? There is, there is actually no way that you could eat that entire dry ass biscuit in one bite. I like... Guinness World Record book, call him up. I know. I kind of want to try it, though. Just see, like, how long. I feel like it could be, like, a challenge. Remember, like, the cinnamon challenge? Yeah. Popeye's biscuit challenge? (laughs) I really do love watching people eat things like that, though. Like, I love watching people eat, even, like, Olive Garden breadsticks. Like, when they just Mm -hmm. chomp them down. It's, like, satisfying to see how many they can eat or how, like, I don't know. I love it. Have you guys (laughs) ever had Red Lobster? Yeah. Okay, now, they I've never had Red Lobster. Those biscuits... I think are definitely better than Popeyes, right? A hundred and ten percent. The Cheddar Bay biscuits. You <laughs> even if you try to go to Giant or whatever and get the box, and make it at home, don't because it's not the same. <laughs> Those because when you crack it open, it's the flakiest. I just softest. saw the steam come no, out. No, me too. Like, I mm-hmm. felt it in my hands. Mm-hmm. I can see the cheese and the chives and all the seasoning if you just close your eyes for a second. Like delicious. Oh my god, I love Does Red Lobster three? have credi- like are they credible like that? Cuz there's only one Red Lobster in Delaware and nobody I know went to it. They're starting to shut down, I believe. Mm. I just feel like if you're selling seafood, like fresh seafood that's not frozen for $10 or less, mm, okay. that's a well, red flag. It's not me. $10 or less though. Red Lobster is kind of pricey. I think they it went can off. be, yeah, but I feel like sometimes they have those deals where they're like, they're like coming lob- for the seafood. Yeah. Lobster or Fest or like yeah, Shrimp lobster Fest. Fish. Because this past summer it was like the Shrimp Fest and they had Crab Rangoon stuffed shrimp mm. like coconut mm. shrimp i can't I even gonna... understand that that's oh. like a crazy concept i just want to also preface that that person is not me i will most certainly eat seafood under $10. <laughs> so where would you guys put red lobster middle. on the pyramid Easy middle middle 
two or three. After Olive Garden? Yeah. Yeah. What about Raising Cane's? Oh. Mm. Raising Cane's. I can go on and on. I love fast food and breads. Um, <laughs> have you guys had, yeah, you guys have had yeah. Raising Cane's bread. Mm-hmm. I think it's so good, but what we have to do is get it buttered on both sides. Okay. And they toast it. And it's like a good Texas toast. These are good different varieties of breads now that I'm thinking about it. Because that's a Texas toast. Yeah, we have a nice like little spread here. That bread is here. so yeah. satisfying to bite into. It like is. It just is like like a little pillow, like a little cushion. Soft. Cause um, they grill it buttery. too. Oh my God. But I, I hate the starving. Raising Cane sauce. I thought I was going to love it. I watched, I agree. I watched TikTok after TikTok of that sauce. I was like, I can't wait. I got it. I took a big old dunk, like literally drenched it. And I was like, this is, it's like too tangy. I don't oh, know. It wasn't I what I was love expecting. Mm. Oh, I scream. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I, <laughs> I would put it under the Cheesecake Factory but still above Popeyes. Yeah. Like I would put it in like spot number five on the pyramid. There's six. Okay. <laughs> I'm just trying to visualize. No, thank this. you for saying that because I couldn't count. <laughs> but honorable mention, we're not featuring it, but Panera. Yeah. The bread bowls. Mm, mm, yeah. Oh my goodness. I like the bread bowl, but I don't really like the baguette you get on the side. No, it's it's the same thing with the Cheesecake Factory. Sometimes it's hard. Yeah. No, sometimes and- it's rock solid. Yeah. <laughs> like you could kill someone with it. Sometimes it's also this big. <laughs> they like take the baguette and break it and you just get a big ignorant piece of bread. Yeah. Like, but yeah. damn, what I'm going to do with this? Yeah, but like what else are you going to do? Get an apple or like the uh, bag of chips? No, like, uh, don't play with the chips, Kate. I, no, really? the chips kind of go off. Yeah, the kettle, the kettle chips. chips. However, the <laughs> bill- <laughs> she, she like see so I was, no, I was looking off into the distance too, which is the worst part. My only thing about that is I feel obligated to eat the baguette. Like I have to mm-hmm. eat everything that's in the bag. Mm-hmm. So yeah. like I know I don't have to. But we don't let food go to waste yeah. in this house. Wait, do you know they're getting rid of the French onion soup at Panera? I, I never see that it. on TikTok. Yeah. Really? I never had it. Yeah. It's like such a, it was the one place where like if I ever want if you ever want a French onion soup, you don't have to go to a restaurant, but they have it at Panera. Mm. Not really. Anymore. I think French onion soup is a restaurant, restaurant quality soup though. Mm-hmm. Like I mm. wouldn't want French onion soup out of a can, out of like a, a container, like out of any yeah. type yeah, of soup. Yeah, what's the cheese like? Is it really cheesy? No, it's like just mixed in. So when you're like, mixing your soup up you just see like the cheese pulls that is not park written now that no. is something i would never <laughs> order at a panera in like philly like i feel like they just would not be able to handle that like yeah. it just would not turn out good <laughs> yeah philly fast food doesn't count for like any of these things because i went to a chick-fil-a in jersey on saturday because i was so hungover i desperately needed it and like suburb fast food suburb chick-fil-a went crazy because you have like 16 year olds that want to work Mm -hmm. they want to get that (laughs) they do they were the (laughs) nicest employees i've ever Uh met so i was thinking because i've been rewatching our episodes and you know we all have very strong personalities we're very opinionated and i was going through my notes i like keep a notes app in my phone of like potential topics i want to talk either about on tiktok on the podcast and i saw one that i had written called Gym class was my villain origin story. And that (laughs) made me laugh so hard. And I'll get into it. But I think we should all tell our villain origin stories. And for those who are like, what does that even mean? It's like kind of the earliest time in your life where I feel like a flame was ignited under you. Like Mm -hmm. since the time this story happened, you've never been the same for better or for worse. You have developed with this and you live your particular life because of how this villain origin story shaped you. Mm -hmm. So I'll start. Um, Lindsay will be able to contribute to this conversation because we went to high school together. So I'm going to name drop. I don't care. We went to Upper Dublin High School. And our... (laughs) I don't care. I'm about to get so messy. I don't give a fuck. Should we sing the song? No. Um, (laughs) I did my announcement. Our logo... What logo? Our mascot was, (laughs) was the Cardinals. And when you got into high school, gym class became hell it was hell in middle school but it became particularly hell in no high school. tell them so first off your freshman year your freshman year we went to a four-year high school you started off with swimming they split up well some high schools are like only 10th oh. 11th and 12th or like prep really schools? yeah where you do an extra year yeah, yeah. sorry heard of that. Okay. don't give me that look <laughs> <laughs> um so freshman year you do swimming. Your PE class is not co-ed. It's the first semester, the guy swim. Second semester, the girl swim. Mm-hmm. So I had been only in my whole entire life ever in a co-ed swimming thing. So ne- Or in a co-ed gym class. So now I have to do swimming, not regular PE class. And it was with all boys. I, of course, get it first period. 
our school was under construction. The only part of the building that was complete was the gymnasium because our high school only valued sports and athletics. So of course, the first thing they build mm. is the gymnasium and the pool. Not like, you know, classrooms where we can actually get educated. But Let's drag them one episode. This is the episode. Okay. Well, oh, Upper yeah. Dublin High School, welcome to your tape. Um, so first period, me, I'm 14 years old. I would walk in the freezing cold to jump in a pool, then to get out in the freezing cold, and it's high school, so it's 7.30 in the whole last morning. Then I would walk to math class, second period, always be 10 minutes late, I'm sopping wet, changing. I would spend the rest of the day smelling like chlorine. Mm. And the people are like, wasn't there showers? Yeah, there was. The class ended at 40 minutes, and you had three minutes to then get changed out of your bathing suit. Where anyone was taking a shower, let me know. So that was where the hell began. But then second semester, you're done swimming, but the girls start swimming, so it's not co-ed. And they tell us that we have fitness tests, so you have to run the mile, you have to do push-ups, you have to do sit-ups. And they tell you, you will be graded on this. How fast you can run a mile impacts your grade, whereas I feel like in middle school, like it was kind of like participation as long as you kind of tried, like right. you passed. This, no, if you fail the fitness test, and by failing it, you take over 12 minutes to run a mile, which for fat chubby me, that was not possible. So freshman year. For do, skinny me, that wasn't possible. <laughs> it was, it was hard. hard. That was That's hard. hard. That's hard. So freshman year, you get introduced to this. You run four laps around the track. I was so slow <laughs> that my teacher thought at the end of lap three that I was done. It was 11. I'll never forget. It was 11 minutes and 53 seconds. He goes, Edelman, you just made it. I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> I cheated. I, I never had to do the fourth lap. It took me 11 minutes and 53 seconds to do a quarter, or three quarters of a mile. I was like, great. But the problem was, you do this twice a year because why not? Why not? You do it in the fall and the spring. No. So the springtime comes around, and I guess a few other people maybe cheated, and they start passing around popsicle sticks. Oh, so you sticks. have to. What was it? You got you collected a popsicle stick for every time you finished a lap. So same thing Why happens. Oh no! Did they like yeah. find out people were cheating? Yep. Yeah. So it's eleven fifty three. I have three sticks in my hand, <laughs> oh, no. and my gym teacher looks at me. He goes, "This is so weird. Like you got you finished this. Like what happened?" And I was just like. I don't know, like, I just, I guess I gained some weight. I wasn't <laughs> as fast, you know, in the spring as I was in the fall. And he's like, okay, well, you need to rerun it. And I was like, I'm sorry. These people at Upper Dublin High School are so insane about the mile that there is what they call mile makeups, where if you oh, skip oh class, God. if you aren't in school the day that you run the mile in your class, you have to stay after school mm -hmm. and run the mile with a whole, it's kind of chaotic and also like iconic. You go to the, you go to the wing of like the gymnasium and all these people who miss the mile and there's a lot of them. This. But it's kind of like fun to see all the other misfits who like did not do the it mile. It was a complete and utter waste of time and Upper <laughs> Dublin School District should be ashamed of themselves it really for putting was. kids under pressure to run a damn mile under 12 minutes that none of us could do unless you were on the freaking football team. Well, that was the issue. So the as I mentioned, I was in an all guys gym class and why I mentioned we were Cardinals was they not only graded you, but they gave awards called Iron Cardinal, where if oh, you yes. made yeah, every you in the Olympics? What Literally, is this? if you made the fitness test in a certain amount of time, so for the mile, if you were a man, there was different for men and women, if you were a man and you ran the mile in under six minutes, okay, Usain Bolt, um, <laughs> if you ran in under six minutes, you got Iron Cardinal. If you got Iron Cardinal on that, Iron Cardinal on the sit-ups, the push-ups, and the sit and reach. That was the only one I was good at. <laughs> then you got a little plaque. And if you got Iron Cardinal all eight semesters of school, you got to wear a little badge on your robe at graduation. Oh, please. Who the fuck cares that you got <laughs> Iron fucking Cardinal? What, is that like your biggest accomplishment in life? Tell me you peaked in high school without telling me you fucking peaked in high school. Like, why are you guys like getting your dicks hard to Iron Cardinal? And people went crazy. There was 18 men in my class. 11 of them got Iron Cardinal. Oh Meanwhile, God. I had to redo the mile. <laughs> so yes, gym class was my villain origin story because this is where like, and I'm gonna get deep here for a second, but I don't think people understand like how bad gym class can be for like kids who are bullied. Like if you were already not the cool kid in high school, it is all coming to fruition in gym class. You're getting picked last to be on the team. People are annoyed with you that you're on their volleyball team, that you're on their kickball team. They're purposely like kicking the ball somewhere else. They're making fun of you when you're running slow. And it got to the point where I actually like 
my mom was riding it for me. She was like, Brandon's oh, not rewriting the mile. She was like, he does not like being in this class. Like, these are all guys. Like, he does not feel comfortable in this class. And they actually put me in a separate thing where, like, the head of the department, I would actually just go to, like, the private fitness center and just, like, lift weights. And that I actually learned. I was like, oh, my mm -hmm. gosh. Like, this is so much better. Like, I'm alone. Like, I don't have to be around everybody else. I had, like, a little worksheet where I, like, filled out, like, what I did. But gym class was hell. And that is really where I started to fend for myself in the world. I, that is yeah. shameful. I, I have feel, to agree. Yeah, I feel like gym, like, there needs to be improvements with gym now because, like, people are all interested in different things and have strengths in different things. And like you're saying, like, if you're already insecure about anything in high school, which is, like, the most awkward fucking yeah. time of your life, right. doing it in a gym class around all these people just amplifies it. Like, there should be outlets like, hey, if you're into yoga, go do yoga. If you want to do, like, dance, go do and dance. And my thing is it should be graded on effort. Like, if I had done the mile in that time and I had walked the entire time, like, didn't even try, that's one thing. And there was people who did that. But I was beat red. Like, I red as a pulp, pulsating sweat, yeah. out of breath. I gave it my <laughs> all. If you gave me the extra three minutes, I'll get it to you in 15 minutes. But why do I have to rerun this in 12 minutes? It's just no. not physically possible for me. I think it was my junior or senior year. I didn't run it. I said, ooh, I forgot my clothes. They were in the other class I was before that period. And it was like the makeup day. I was like, oh, I can't run it again. Yep. I think my friend Erica, she was like, oh, I just got something like off my eye. She could easily run it. It's like, hell no, I'm not running that shit. What's that going like to do? It's not going to get me into college because I can run a mile. But they no. really thought that, especially right. up for Dublin. Like, I wrote, a, I took a gym class in high school or in college because I thought it would be fun, like an elective. And I sent a note to, shout out Patty Todd at Upper Dublin High School. She was the best gym teacher I've ever had. And I literally wrote a note to her and I was like, you inspired me to always be my best. And like, you pushed me to like do great. And you're the only gym teacher at Upper Dublin who's ever made a difference and actually been a teacher. I did, however, unlike Brandon, I was disrespectful to all the gym teachers. I didn't give a rat's ass if I was picked last. It was laughable to me. I went and like looked at the guys. I never wore my uniform. I wore yoga pants. I was disrespectful, but it was horrible. I'm yeah. so sorry, Brandon. Yeah. Oh, that's okay. That's horrible. I mean, hey, everything ended up for me okay. But I always wonder, like, I wonder if that got better or if it's mm -hmm. ever going to get better. It didn't. My mm -hmm. brother went there for a little. Yeah. He was an athlete. And if you forgot your gym uniform, you got, you didn't get to practice with your team. That's imagine that. Like, you can imagine what my mother wrote to the department. Anyway. <laughs> What's yours, Lindsay? Your villain origin story. Well, mine is actually about a man. Um, so I would consider myself to be a nice girl, um, who thinks the best of others, but that all changed when I got to college. Um, my experience with dating was I dated a guy in high school. He is like all of our friend now. He watches our podcast. Shout out Brian. Like there was nothing bad about him. Then I dated a guy after him. He was peaches and cream. Nice. And then I got to college where I met this man. And he was someone that I met at a party that I later found out was his party. And he was like 21, which was a huge deal. So all my friends were like, you have to talk to him. He can buy us alcohol, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, all right, fine. Like, I'll go out with him. So I went to his house and we like hung out and watched a movie. So innocent. And I was like, oh, I'm going to marry this man. So I spent my entire life like fixated on being with this person. And I remember in college one time we were not dating but we were exclusive this was like in the very beginning like this was baby freshman Lindsay we weren't dating but we weren't talking to other people and I went to his house one time there was a bunch of people there he was having a little kickback and when I walked in the door everyone stared at me like all types of weird and I was like did I walk in on something like what's happening so I was like where is we'll call him where's that man we'll call him that <laughs> man so I was like where's that man and they were like oh he's in his room so I'm like all right cool I didn't have to knock on the door. What am I supposed to do? So I open the, I go to open the door and it's locked. Oh, no. And I was like, that man, knock, knock, it's me. And he's like, oh, yeah, yeah, like I'm coming. He opens the door and there's a girl inside of the bedroom. And this girl is someone who never liked oh, me. And I didn't know why. I was really upset because he was good friends with her. And I was like, your friend doesn't like me. And he's like, no, no, she does. So she's in there with tears in her eyes. And I'm like, did someone die? Like, what's happening? She proceeds to look at me and say, you need to leave because I'm talking to that man and I need to talk to him. It's personal. So I looked at him like, you going to tell her or am I? Like, someone's getting kicked out. Dummy, dummy me. He's like, I need to talk to her for a little longer. Like, can you just give us a minute? <sighs> so the, the kindness inside of me that I've only dated a boy in high school. I've only had like nice boyfriends. I'm like, oh, he doesn't mean any harm. Like, this is fine. 
I walk out of that room and I stand there for 10, 20, 30, 40 minutes. And I thought about it. It was how Brandon described a villain, villain origin story. I watched a fire ignite inside of me and I said, oh, hell no. And I put on my jacket and I walked my ass home. And he called me the minute I got home. It was like a 20 minute walk. He called me the minute I got home and he said, where did you go? And I said, I left. And that man proceeded to cheat on me with my friends, people that I knew, people I didn't know, people on campus, people who were slutty, people who were not slut. Like, you name it, he did it. And my, I, I stayed with that because I was like, he's going to change. And I said, if you want to play these games, so will I. And that's where Lindsay became Lindsay. Oh and I had gosh. a horrible, toxic reputation up until a few years ago, maybe <laughs> last year. But it doesn't matter <laughs> because I blame that on him. Hope he's having a great day. Lindsay, <laughs> I can't breathe. Yeah, that was oh crazy. My, my hands are sweaty. I didn't know about that. Oh, my God. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Anyways, Bales, how I about can't you? I can't breathe. Um, I don't know. Probably my earliest remembrance is when my father left. Just kidding. He left when before I was even born. Um, <clears throat> I didn't it's a joke. Laugh Everybody could laugh. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> um, no, mine was your classic bullying. I was actually bullied a lot in high school. I mean, I was overweight, like big girl, and then develop an ED. But that can be another story. Um, so even after that, I was still getting bullied, and it just made no sense. Like I had like good friends. I wasn't like an outcast. I'm friends with everybody. Like I think everybody needs a friend. So I remember it was senior year and we we're at this party. It was like, like Christmas holiday time. I just remember we had like Christmas hats on, whatever. Having the time of my life. It was such a fun like house party. It was like all our friends, whatever. And I, just, I forgot what happened, but these kids, Ben, Tyler, Matt, who am I forgetting? Rocco, you mother, <laughs> these guys, they, Ooh, they we're dropping names this week. I don't give a fuck. They made my high school a living hell. Like oh. they, I was just attacked constantly. And like my friends honestly just sat there and didn't do fucking shit about it, but whatever. Mm. Um, and so I remember at this party, I forgot what they said. They were just like picking on me and I also had acne, but like, it was just like my dark marks, whatever. I don't have to explain. And so they just, to the point where I started sobbing at this party. Like, I remember, like, this girl's house was a mansion. And it was probably only 10 of us. I remember I went to a room and was sobbing the whole time. Give me their Instagram. Like, oh, I, I got have something them. to say. And it just, like, I remember in that single moment, I was like, I am, like, to the fact that I'm already so skinny and you guys are still fucking picking on me. And I was like, I am never, ever, ever going to take this shit again. And I started standing my ground to the point where they thought I was a bitch. Like, they Good. asked me for a gum. I'm like, am I a CVS? Like, kiss my fucking ass. Like, I'm never taking shit from anybody again. And I don't know if that probably comes off, like, as me. Like, I can just, I'm just going to dish it right back to you. Like, I'm not going to be someone's stomping ground because you have horrible shit going on. You ended up in the fucking military and dropped out. So, like, I just, that just, ugh. That was my villain origin story. I think just, like, from that point on, I was like, I'm not doing this anymore. Like, I'm going to stand yeah. up for myself. I'm not going to take this shit. Because I would laugh along with it. Like, I was bullied. I was just like, ha, ha, ha. But I'm yeah. like, I'm this 18-year-old girl. I cannot keep getting bullied. This is insane. It's so hard, too, because I was in a similar situation. And it's like, when you're that bullied, it almost, like, I don't know if this happened to you, but, like, when you weren't the one getting bullied, you would have a hard time standing up for the person who was. Because, like, I would be like, I'm just lucky they're not they're not tormenting me today. I'm going to keep my mouth shut. And I hated that because I always wanted to be the kid who, like, stood up for somebody else. And I would see situations where it wasn't me that day getting picked on. I would be like, just stay silent, Brandon. Put your head mm -hmm. down. Like, you're lucky they're not coming for you right now. Yeah. Which is so fucked. It's so fucked. And it was kind of tricky, too, because, like, they were our guy friends. It was just, like, the guys that were always picking on me. I really didn't do anything to, like instigate it or anything it was just like oh she's the big black girl that we can just pick on like even like gym class was like hell. horrible because i had a gym class where sorry i'm dragging i had a gym class where it was called advanced pe games and i loved it because <laughs> i played sports i was also athletic like there was just no reason and maybe there was reason i don't know but i like that class we were graded on if you won or not so like basketball whatever and like i was good at these sports and i remember these it was these juniors because they were laughing with the seniors like my grade and there was these junior boys that were picking on me and the like gym teacher didn't say anything. I'm like, I'm, what is going on here? It's crazy. So crazy. Yeah. So I just after that, I was like, I'm not doing this. And anyone who's out there getting bullied, I mean, wait, they're like 25 year old listeners. People I get mean, bullied. Yeah. You're being bullied. It's just not cool. Like I just from that point on, just uh, Michelle I, Obama. I feel like growing up, it was so like when you're in 
elementary school and high school it's so easy for like jokes to just be jokes and you like convince yourself you're like oh well they're just messing like and then all of a sudden you're like wait that actually like really hurts my feelings and it's actually not a joke at all but your like initial response is to like defend them sort of you're like oh well they're my friends they're not really saying that this awful thing about me and then you sit back and you're like wait they are like that's actually really fucking mean like exactly Hmm. yeah on to lighter note what's your villain story well this is not lighter (laughs) (laughs) unfortunately this I feel like there's a lot of different moments throughout my life but this one much like Lindsay was from a boy and this is definitely the moment where like I feel like since then I've looked at things so differently so this was my like I, I dated my high school and college boyfriend. We dated for like five years. So we dated a long time. Um, and every year, like I would always tell him all I've ever wanted was a surprise birthday party. Like, I don't know why. I've just always thought it would be so fun to be like totally caught off guard and have a surprise birthday party. And this was my 21st birthday party. And leading up to it, I'm like, I want a surprise party. Like this is, and I just kept dropping all these hints. And my boyfriend at the time was like blowing me off. But like, I was like, oh, maybe like I'm hopeful, whatever. So let me reiterate that it was like literally my 21st birthday. So like drinking like crazy. And I will never forget because it was me and Bailey went out um, because our birthdays are really close together. And so we went out the Friday of my birthday weekend and we stayed out late. It was on my fucking 21st birthday. Mm. Like I remember we were at Voyeur actually. I remember. Mm, I remember this night too. Yep. (laughs) And we had gone out to like a college bar and then we ended up going to Voyeur and we didn't live in the city. So like coming to the city was kind of a big thing back then. We came to the city. We had the best night ever. That was like one of my first times in Voyeur. Like I just remember being like a little kid in a candy store. I was so excited. And I came home and I woke up the next morning to my boyfriend just roasting the fuck out of me which was nothing new for like context he would tell me I was embarrassing and that like everyone made fun of me and that no one liked me constantly so I was kind of like I don't know it was like very normal to go out at night and then wake up to these awful text messages but then they turned terrible and he was like well I don't want to see you and just so you know I did plan you a surprise birthday party but because you went out last night and pissed me off I'm gonna cancel it and no one and you're not gonna have it anymore and I'm like bawling my eyes out. I remember I was texting Brandon. I'm like, what's going on? Then he proceeds to send me every single screenshot of him texting my friends, my mom, your mom, everyone. He's like, yep, we're throwing a party for Casey on this day at this time. You should be there literally sending me screenshots of him planning my party. And he was like, this is what you're missing out on. Like you wanted to go out. You don't want to come back as if I like was out in the streets. Yeah. Like I, we probably came home at 2 a.m. at that point, like yeah. whatever. So he cancels my party and he's like, these are, this is what you could have had, but you're not having it because I'm mad at you. And so I'm like, I remember I literally, there isn't a picture on my Instagram from this weekend. And if you look back at it, my eyes are so puffy in this picture because I literally cried the entire day, like the whole day. Oh, that's really um, mean. Yeah. It gets worse, worse because I thought that like, Nobody was going to go out. There was going to be no nothing. Nope. He still had a party and invited everyone over, but just said it wasn't for me anymore. And everyone still went to his house and all these people showed up and it just wasn't my party anymore. And some people didn't get the memo that it was canceled. And I remember this one girl specifically was like, happy birthday. And he gave me like the dirtiest look out of the corner of his eye because he he was like, oh, this isn't for you anymore. This is just a pregame. It's not yours. So that is like, I literally like think back to that. And I have still to this day, I have such a hard time getting excited for things. Like even if like a trip is planned, flights are booked, hotel, I'm like, I can't get excited until I'm literally there. Because Mm -hmm. like, I don't know, that moment just made me realize like you can, something can be like ripped apart from you for like, so no reason. Damn. Um, Yeah. So I still have a really hard time getting excited for things now. And like my boyfriend like loves planning and he'll try to plan something like a month in advance. And I'm like, I literally can't plan that. That's an interesting topic. Like kind (laughs) of. Yeah. I'm like, I need a minute. I know. Oh my God. (laughs) Number one, obviously that's awful. I'm not as reactive because unfortunately I lived it with you. Brandon was there texting me. (laughs) Yeah. I, I was in on the surprise and then unfortunately also notified of the surprise cancellation. But what I think is interesting, and I've actually heard you talk about this before on like your own social media is, and what you're saying now is like how to adjust to a healthy relationship when all you've known is like, a toxic relationship Mm -hmm. and like when you kind of are in a new relationship with someone who does not have the same habits as a partner of your past who treated you poorly 
you still have this like defense up mm -hmm. because like your expectations are so like a trauma response almost mm -hmm. from all of the things that you've gone through in your past. Like how do you navigate that now in like a healthy relationship? Yeah, it's so hard. And like the part that I didn't realize that comes with that is like, I, if you would have, before I met my boyfriend, if you would have been like, oh, were you over your past relationship? I would have been like, girl, that was five years ago. I do not care at all. Like I thought I was so over that relationship. And I was in a sense, like I didn't think about him or didn't miss him or like anything in regards to that. We were broken up for a really long time, but being in this relationship, there were so many things I didn't actually heal from. Like, I think you think you heal from things because mm -hmm. you're no longer in that environment. So you're like, oh, I'm healed from that situationship. I don't see them anymore. But until you're put into another situation where like, you kind of have to like prove that you've learned, you're, you realize like, wait, I, I'm actually not healed. Like there were so many things in my relationship now in the very beginning where I would have thought were so easy. And then I was like, wait, why is this coming up? This relationship was when I was like 15 years old. But if you don't heal properly, those problems are going to manifest at some point in some way. Mm -hmm. Like it's, yeah. it's crazy how even a healthy relationship can like bring out toxic tendencies if they're not healed. Yeah. yeah. That's a really good point. Wow, I feel like I should point. start crying. I know. <laughs> I know this is like, this I feel like really good. like emotional. Yeah. It's crazy how like such random little moments like right. really do impact your life so strongly. Yeah. And that's why I like thought it was like, we, we put up a post like last week, like what do people want to hear more of? And I think like the common theme was like, they wanted to hear a little bit more about us and our mm -hmm. stories. And like, I thought villain origin was like kind of a fun, like dark humor way, but like Definitely also is. a good way for like, people at listeners to know like we're at this point now where it's like so fun like we all do social media we sit here and have a podcast but like our life was not always like a smooth it still isn't but like mm, right. our life didn't it wasn't always like this and I feel like it's really important for people at home to listen like if you went through something traumatic like you're not alone like we've all been through mm -hmm. shit that's like shaped us into who we are now yeah, and it's it like better. great yeah. to like sit here with friends who like have similar experiences and can like validate your feelings and also share their own journeys and get vulnerable yeah even like you being like when you were saying like oh how you always wish that you could be the friend to stand up for a bully like yeah I think you do do that in different ways. Mm -hmm. Like I was 100%. just talking about this with my boyfriend last weekend. You are the one person in my life who like taught me how to be myself. Like from the day I met you, I was like, wow, he's so confident. He's so comfortable in his own skin. Like I'm going to be more comfortable in my skin. And like you, you do that now you're in such a good place where you can kind of be that friend to like pull someone out of a, you know, of not feeling like themselves or something. So even if Thank you maybe you. couldn't do that in high school, you can now. Yeah. And um, you always stand up for like, there have been multiple times where like Brandon has made me realize things where I'm like, even if you're not standing up to the person who's bothering me, like you're standing up for me, which helps yeah. me stand up for myself. So it's like, agree. yeah. All you right, guys. Well, it. let's end on a lighter note. We've already done our immunity necklaces. Um, what is on everyone's TikTok for you page this week? Bailey, you want to kick us off? Sure. Um, I think we. <laughs> <laughs> what? Sorry. I'm sorry. Um, I think we talked about last week, but you were talking about the Squid Games, the challenge show on Netflix. So mm -hmm. I had to immediately start watching it, and I just got finished. I got caught up to episode nine last night. I think. The new episode comes, comes out. Comes out tomorrow, yeah, right? Yeah, I didn't realize that. I was like waiting and it said the new, whatever. And um, it's so good. And the way they so do good. the challenge, obviously I heard there's a lot of um, just their living conditions were hell. Mm -hmm. And like the red light, green light game, I guess took eight hours. Yeah. Yeah. It seemed like hell, but it's just, I'm not giving away any spoilers really because like it's the yeah. games are giving challenges, but I like that they switched up the games. They Me didn't. Too. They didn't do tug of war. They did battleships. And I totally forgot about that game. I cool love yeah. when they did the cookie challenge and they made the people like pick in you like unison like they had to mm -hmm. unanimously pick who got each cookie and like multiple people got eliminated because they couldn't decide which one they wanted right. and they were arguing with people. I thought th I love how they put like a really emphasis on like decision making mm -hmm. like even when the one person like got the choice to eliminate three people and she thought about it so strategically on oh, like yes. who she was going to pick like. That's why I love competition reality shows because for me, it's like really fascinating to see like how people's minds work when they're put in a position where like they need to make a decision that's going to negatively impact somebody else. Right, mm -hmm. especially for how many people are playing that game. It's not just like a big brother or survivor. Like there's so many people. So when they say like, oh, eliminate three people on the spot like that and you haven't talked to 50 people, yep. I think that's insane. And, and they, it's four and a half million dollars. Yeah. And it starts with like what, 500 plus people? 456. Oh my God. Right. And then yeah. there, it, there's one. 
<laughs> like it's crazy how many people have got to go. It yeah. was so funny. Casey, your mom texted me. I know. And she was like, <laughs> I'm watching this show. You're so right. It's so good. Like I'm on edge. I was like, it's crazy. It's so good. Really she good. she literally, I was like talking about it. She's like, oh my God, no, I already texted Brandon. I told him I'm watching it. And I was like, oh my God. I didn't think I was going to like it, but once I started getting into it, but it's all on my TikTok now. So it's all the players and they're yes. like, and it's all of them that were, lim- well, obviously the show is already filmed, but they're just saying what's going on. They're giving the drama and like all the behind the scenes of the challenges, which I'm like, oh, it's not like green screen. It's so crazy when a TikTok, like or when a TV show becomes a TikTok phenomenon. Mm-hmm. Like if you're not watching Euphoria, if you're not watching White Lotus as that's airing, oh, I feel so bad for mm-hmm. you because like it's not fun to be on TikTok and it's if you're not watching the show and it's so fun to be on TikTok if you're watching and hearing everyone's like theories experience like experiences like in the it's I love it I yeah I didn't even watch the last I didn't finish the last season of Euphoria but to. I know every, every time you guys go into like the cast all of the like <laughs> quotes that we do I know them and I can say them because I've seen them <laughs> every fucking on day on TikTok so like I don't even I literally still haven't watched it because I'm like I know everything that happened like yeah. I, I saw it on TikTok they also do the parts like we said before there's like parts and full episodes on TikTok so you really yeah. don't have to do cable yeah. anymore do you guys have anything on your FIPs um mine is I like have a specific creator I feel like every week mine's creator based my this week mine is this guy I really really love him um his name is Benton McClintock I think and he will like take screenshots of like really ridiculous things so like right now it's the Erewhon and Balenciaga collab oh my god and he'll be like thank god we can now get a $500 (laughs) Erewhon Balenciaga apron I mean the people needed this he just did one which is an $18,000 membership that for like, I don't know if it's the year or six months, you can, with the membership, go from like a private plane to New York to Miami. Like it will fly you from New York to Miami. And the marketing was crazy. It was like, if you're sick of riding with people you don't know, or like (laughs) sick of going on a plane with other passengers, just spend $18,000. But the way he like tells it, like Mm -hmm. storytelling is a gift and it's just so funny. And he's also just such, I've never met him in person, but he's messaged me. He's such a nice person. Um, So I like love that he's like blowing up right now. his videos crack me up. I saw his, he did like the Kardashians gift guide. That's yes. like the first time I saw him and I mm-hmm. was cracking up because the shit on there was fucking, I think Courtney had like a $3,000 at home sauna and like, yes. I'm like, girl, who do you In think is right just mind. casually buying this? Like they have no concept of like how Out the people touch. down <laughs> here live because yeah. it is not the same. I saw one, it was like Hermes focused and it was like, envelopes for your letters and it was like yes. thousands of dollars and I was oh, like who's yeah. buying this to send, yeah. That's ridiculous crazy. what's on yours lens mine's been really wholesome lately I am for the listeners planning a secret Santa all the girls here are invited I'm really excited and um I've been like stressing out because I want to make my house very Christmassy and cute this is our first year with a Christmas tree so I'm using that as an opportunity to just buy things we don't need so I've been like on drink recipe and like fun holiday games I know Bales you like the games (laughs) so (laughs) we're gonna have some fun holiday games there um I want to do like little gift bags so I've been like very on like mom Here's a tip. Talk. Don't sleep on the dollar store. But, but don't girl, go to I one will in Philly. Not. Go to like a... Mm-hmm. So- uh, and Dollar Tree. Yeah. Not all Dollar like, General. Yeah. Any kind of dollar store because they have like the best holiday stuff. It's actually like cute. And you can get like cups mm-hmm. for everyone and get like nice glasses. So yeah. mm-hmm. speaking of the dollar store really quickly, I got an Amazon package sent to an Amazon locker. Have you guys ever done that no. before? No. Fucking crazy. So packages get stolen in Philly like every single second. Yeah. So I had this bodysuit actually that I'm currently wearing. It's dumb cute. I, thanks. It's skim stoop. Um, I really wanted it and it was getting delivered to my house and I was like, fuck, I'm not home. So I got it redirected to a locker. Oh. You go and you like connect the locker to your Bluetooth on your phone and you say I'm here and the locker just opens oh, it wow. was I literally felt like black I was mirror. in like yes I felt like I was in a black mirror episode it literally opens I took my bodysuit out and then in, on your phone it's like please close the locker what? as soon as I closed it it popped up it was like order complete oh my like, god where do these oh. exist in the dollar store um oh. like by IGA like Aramingo area like by where and I was just like in shock I've never done that before does it have no. to be Amazon yeah it has to be okay. Amazon and you can only there's only like 12 lockers so you have to get it within two days of it being delivered or else they'll send it back oh. um mm. but it was great it was like very futuristic interesting but cool I might try one of those yeah mm. it was nice for if your packages like if you're not home yeah it was a Mine nice always thing get stolen I wish UPS and FedEx had that yeah instead of leaving my packages outside 
to right? be stolen when we have a mail room. Let me stop. <sighs> What's on your FYP case? Mine's Christmassy too. I am obsessed with Elf on the Shelf. I like low-key want to get one just for me and Jake. Like <laughs> he doesn't even have to see it in the mornings. Like <laughs> I just love, these parents are crazy. Some parents go like, I saw one where they like had the elf sitting next to a blender and then they put like a little mini elf hat like in the blender with a bunch of red like food dye. And they were like, oh, like accidentally like blended our brother Please. like they're like crazy with it and they have them like hanging from the ceiling no the like, woman who put flour on the ground and stomped the elf in yes there. oh and I then had that. it making a snow angel out on the counter i was cracking and up. i follow yeah. this one woman whose kid is her son's like not even a year old so he does not understand it at all but she goes so hard and she literally admits it she's like he doesn't know what this is like but i'm just gonna do it and she oh, she's so dedicated and it like makes me want to like be a mom just so i can do elf on the shelf have a Baby. <laughs> Isn't the whole thing like it's for kids to they're not supposed to touch the elf mm -hmm. right because it reports back to Santa that you're being bad or whatever. Mm -hmm. It just seems like a headache. Yeah, there's a lot. And I feel like it's like becoming way too much because now you can get elf on the shelf kits on TikTok shop oh. and it's like outfits for them to wear and like activities for them to do. And it's like, all right, like just make this like an arts and craft project at home with your tissue boxes and cotton balls. Like, right. you don't need to be buying twenty nine ninety nine elf kit oh, on yeah. TikTok shop. Because there's people that's going to buy that shit. Yeah, Etsy. they see. Mm -hmm. Oh, hell yeah. It's ridiculous. The TikTok shop is ridiculous. Honestly, don't even get me started. No, because I saw they had such a good deal on Olipop 12 packs. I got my mom hooked on TikTok shop. I have so. bought a lot of things. I will be honest. One of my TikTok favorite. Um, mm -hmm. Wow. I bought like you little sluts. I bought like six or seven things from there. <laughs> All right. Well, the crazy thing is one of my create my, one of my favorite creators, she just did a video saying that she did it for the first time, like featured a product. And she was like, the video like got 15,000 likes, like 150,000 views. She was like, that's not crazy for me. She's like, I made a thousand dollars off the commission. Fuck? So it's like, now I'm like, damn, should I like thought, sign damn. up? And she admitted, she was like, I really think TikTok pushed the video. Like TikTok really wants you to mm -hmm. do it. I'm about to yeah. do an experiment just to like do a TikTok shop video just to see if it will go viral. Should we yeah. all do it? Yeah. Let's do it. Let's do I it. Got Let me get this lollipop. Have you guys seen the like lock you put on your door? That's like the like extreme lock. I don't know. I saw it on, on TikTok shop or on a video. I kept seeing it. So I bought it. And it's like this little like lock that goes on your door frame and like no one can break into your door. My boyfriend is very strong. He like is tough. And I had him like yanking on the door as hard as he could and it like wouldn't even budge. So I'm about to make a video on that and see if I can make a thousand dollars. You should. Yeah. Honestly. All right, guys. Well, this I feel like turned out to be a really good episode. Good. Yeah. Um, very therapeutic. I literally said to Lindsay, I was like, oh, I have therapy later. Our podcast. <laughs> um, but thank you all to the listeners at home. Uh, we love you guys and stay tuned for next week. And remember everything we said, keep it between us girlies. Yes. Bye guys. Bye guys. Bye.